nature's fundamental force may be out of control. Physicists look for evidence October 11, 2019 This can shake the very foundations of modern science. Nature's fundamental force may be out of control. Gravity arises from the distortion of space-time itself. Image, Shutterstock only four numbers support the laws of physics. This is why scientists have for decades sought discrepancies in these so-called fundamental constants. Finding such a variation would shake the very foundations of modern science. Not to mention it would guarantee at least one lucky researcher a free trip to Stockholm, a new shiny gold medal, and a million dollars. Recently, a pair of astronomers turned to one of the oldest stars in the universe to test the constancy of the four fundamental forces of nature of one of the superstars, gravity. They have looked back over time for the past billions of years for inconsistencies. Not wanting to reveal the full story yet, but no Nobel Prizes will be awarded yet. The G-man we take Newton's gravitational constant denoted simply by G for granted probably because gravity is quite predictable. We call this the Newton gravitational constant because Newton was the first person to really need it to help describe his famous laws of motion. Using his newly invented calculus, he was able to extend his laws of motion to explain the behavior of everything from apples falling from a tree to the orbits of the planets around the sun. But nothing in his mathematics told him how strong it should be gravity which had to be experimentally measured and inserted to make the laws work. And it's been basically that way for centuries, measuring G on its own and entering it into the equations when needed. Today we have a more sophisticated understanding of gravity, thanks to Einstein's theory of general relativity, which describes how gravity arises from the distortion of space-time itself. And one of the cornerstones of relativity is that physical laws must remain the same in all frames of reference. This means that if an observer in a specific frame, say, someone standing on the Earth's surface or floating in the middle of space, measures a specific force of gravity Newton's g, that same value must apply equally throughout space. It's time. It is simply incorporated into the fundamental assumptions of mathematics and work of Einstein's theory. On the other hand, we know that general relativity is an incomplete theory of gravity. It does not apply to the quantum realm, for example, to the tiny particles that make up an electron or a proton, and the search continues to find a true quantum theory of gravity. One such candidate for this theory is called string theory, and in string theory there are no numbers that just need to be released. In string theory, Everything we know about nature, from the number of particles and forces to all their properties, including the gravitational constant, must come naturally and elegantly from mathematics itself. If this is true, Newton's gravitational constant is not just a random number, it is a result of some complicated process operating at the subatomic level, and need not be constant. And so, in string theory, as the universe grows and changes, the fundamental constants of nature can change with it. All this raises the question, is the Newton constant really constant? Einstein gives a firm and clear yes, and string theorists give a firm and clear perhaps. It's time to do some testing. Einstein on trial in recent years, scientists have developed very sensitive experiments on the force of gravity on and around Earth. These experiments provide some of the strictest restrictions on variations in G. But only in recent years, it may be that Newton's constant varies incredibly slowly, and we just don't look closely long enough. At the other end of the spectrum, if you play with the fundamental constants of nature, you will begin to mess up the physics of the early universe, which is visible to us in the form of the so-called cosmic microwave background. This is the afterglow light pattern of when the universe was only a few hundred thousand years old. Detailed observations of this backlight also impose restrictions on the gravitational constant, but these restrictions are much less accurate than those found in the tests we can do in our own backyard. Recently, Astronomers have invented a G-variation test that strikes a good compromise between these two extremes, which they describe online in the Arzif Prepress journal. It is a relatively high accuracy test. Not as accurate as Earth-based ones, but far better than cosmic ones, and also has the benefit of spanning literally billions of years. It turns out that we can look for changes in Newton's gravitational constant by observing the oscillation of one of the oldest stars in the universe. It's in the frenzy the Kepler Space Telescope is famous for hunting exoplanets, but in general it is really good at looking at stars for long periods of time looking for even the slightest variation. And some of these variations come only from the fact that stars vary in brightness. In fact, stars pulsate and shake due to sound waves breaking inside them, just like earthquakes, both made of materials as super hot, 
dense plasma in the case of the sun that can vibrate. These tremors and flutters on the star's surface affect its brightness and tell us about its inner structure. The interior of a star depends on its mass and age. As stars evolve, the core size and dynamics of all its inner layers change. These changes affect what is happening on the surface. And if you start fiddling with nature constants, like Newton's G, it changes the way stars evolve over their lifetimes. If Newton's constant is really constant, the stars must slowly increase in brightness and temperature over time, because as they burn hydrogen in their nuclei, they leave behind an inert piece of helium. This helium disrupts the fusion process, reducing its efficiency, forcing stars to burn at a faster rate to maintain balance getting warmer and brighter in the process. If the Newton constant is slowly decreasing over time, this process of brightness and warming will operate at much faster time scales. But if Newton's constant behaves in the opposite way and constantly increases over time, the stars actually decrease their temperatures for a while, and then keep the temperature steady as they increase in brightness as they age. But these changes are really only apparent for very long periods, so we can't really look at our own sun which is about 4.5 billion years old, as a good example. In addition, large stars have no long life and also have incredibly complicated interiors that are difficult to model. On the scene comes KIC 7,970,740 to the rescue, a star only three quarters of the mass of our sun that has been burning for at least 11 billion years. A perfect lab. After looking at this star, Astronomers took years of data from Kepler and compared them to various models of the star's evolution, including those with variations in Newton's g. They then tied these models to the observations of seismology, the maneuvers, on the surface. Based on his observations, the Newton constant is indeed constant, at least as far as possible, with no changes detected at the two-part trillion level such as knowing the distance between Los Angeles and New York for the width of a single bacterium in the last 11 billion years. Where does the Newton constant come from and how does it remain so constant? We have no answer to that question, and as far as we know Newton is not going anywhere anytime soon.